Welcome to episode one of the Worldwide Hoopers podcast. Um, this is a podcast that I sort of wanted to do. I wanted to make more content when I was out here in Lithuania, but it's easier to make something like this rather than something like uh, the vlogs I've been making in the past. But I couldn't do this by myself. I have uh, here with me is a great teammate, great friend of mine, my boy Jackson. He's sitting to the right of me a little bit. We'll get into him in a little bit, but uh, we're sort of, this is a podcast we're going to talk about basketball, how our lives are going, we're going to talk about music, we might talk about the NFL. Really, it's just to keep things interesting, keep things fun, have something to uh, sort of produce and have out on the internet. Um, but like I said, i got my boy Jackson with me. Boy, how you doing? Man, uh, it's kind of crazy. We were talking the other day about how small the world is, mm-hmm. especially the basketball world. You know, we were in the same league last year, had no idea who you were. Yeah. And now here we are in the same country, again, in the same league as teammates. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny that we'll get into this a little bit later, but talking about stuff that we do off the court and kind of what your vision is and what my vision is kind of aligns. So I'm excited that we can be here and kind of do this. And uh, I'm interested to to see what kind of reactions and stuff we get from people back home and, and hopefully people overseas, wherever you may be. So yeah for sure and that's and that's for me like it was you and i spoke like the first week we knew each other i drove you up to get a cut in vilness of illness conus and uh we're sort of just talking about like we're talking content and stuff like creating content for you um but then i did that interview um for basket news and it was sort of like the guy was excited when i spoke about doing a podcast something like that and i just thought right away it'd be perfect just to, for you and I to do it it's a no-brainer I mean we have we have so much time here in Lithuania we're just chilling hanging out uh we play a lot of 2k things like that so I mean this is just in my apartment right now um which we'll obviously have to give you guys a photo of of the studio I'll put it I'll put it here um but you know it's it's fun man it's sick but I think that to start this one and start like the whole journey I mean my YouTube it's going to be up on my YouTube so people know about me like I mean it's boring. I can't say, oh, I was from Australia, I'm from Sydney, and just go through that ramble again. Like, we can do it because it's a new show, but I'm not, I don't want to do it again. <laughs> you know, people are probably like, yeah, turn it off in the first minute. Like, I think we get more into, like, into you, like, get to know you, bro. Like, where are you from? What you been up to, bro? Like, where you went to high school, college, you know, stuff like that. And then we just roll from there, I think. Yeah, man. So, uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, Jackson Dubinsky, I'm from Columbia, Missouri. So, I tell people all the time, pretty much right in the middle of the United States, Midwest, Mm -hmm. um, in between St. Louis and Kansas City. Um, Grew up there my whole life. Um, Went to high school there at Rockbridge High School. Mm -hmm. Uh, Played basketball. Um, Actually, also played golf there. Uh, I won a state title, actually, in golf and not in basketball. So you haven't even told me that. So it was like, yeah, I mean, you spend all these hours on the court and and I was obviously very dedicated to to both sports but I actually ended up winning a title as a team yeah um uh, playing golf so um then I went on to Columbia College which is a small NAI school mm-hmm. in my city I stayed home and and played there for four years and and was it was the best decision that I ever made um up until this point in my life I always tell people because I was able to meet some of my best friends. I mm-hmm. played for a great coach who was a great mentor for me. And then just the relationships and, and being on great teams and, and getting the experience of what a whole college experience yeah. um, can give you on and off the court. It was, it was perfect for me. Um, so that's a little bit about, you know, a few years back. Um, and then after my senior year, you know, I probably about my junior year, I, I knew I wanted to play. Yeah. Um, I didn't know where it was going to be or or what it was going to look like, but I had, I had a lot of good mentors and, uh, specifically, um, there's a guy, Mike Smith that, uh, um, was playing professionally overseas for quite some time that, that lived in Colombia. He was playing in Belgium in the top league up there. And, uh, he kind of took me under his wing my, my junior year and started working out with him and, and kind of getting, learning the ins and outs of what professional basketball life looks like overseas. Um, so after my senior year, um, was able to get my first contract in Mexico, um, top league, um, which was a great experience. Um, I loved Mexico. The league was, um, very competitive, very athletic, physical. 
Um, I enjoyed my time there. I actually ended up playing in both leagues, so LNBP and Sibacopa. Um, played for a couple different teams. Um, and in my first year, I feel like I aged three years because I yeah. got to learn so much, you know, from teammates, from, you know, letdowns, positive things, things about the business side of basketball, what it looks like, um, you know, just getting used to like, okay, you know, like they don't tell you, like, you might not get paid on time. You yeah. know, it's like when you're from the States, that doesn't like register with you. Like, <laughs> You know, people who have regular nine to five jobs, it's like, okay, I get paid on the 15th or I get paid on the first 30th, whatever. So learning about that, um, learning about agents and all those things was was um, a first for me, especially that first year. Yeah, but also like living away from home and stuff. Like, Had you ever been to Mexico prior to going there, no, like I holidays was, or anything? I was actually, I was supposed to go to uh-huh. Mexico on a trip. I didn't end up going, um, but... Yeah, like being away from home. I was like looking forward to that because I didn't get it in college. Yeah. It was obviously like hard to leave family. But like I was looking forward to that because I didn't do that in college like yeah. a lot of kids get to. Yeah, like for David, sure. For example. So. Yeah, like that's that's what I'm sort of saying it because, you know, I've, I've lived away from college and like lived away from home for college and, you know, going overseas and stuff is sort of just the norm for me. But like that first year for you having to adjust to being like to adjust to everything and then on top adjusting to being away from home is wild right yeah. so then that next year you're in mm-hmm. europe right yeah so europe, my yeah. my second year um i ended up in europe i was in bosnia mm-hmm. um and this was like i would so i long story short i had some injuries that i dealt with that i had to come home from mexico and i didn't i didn't play for a while because i was back home rehabbing which was super difficult because it was like you know i just started my career but i didn't really have any like i didn't have a lot of film out mm-hmm. You know, I just was, I was very nervous about getting another contract because there's, I mean, as you know, everybody back home that doesn't go to the league wants to play professionally, wants to play overseas. Like, that's the dream. And that's kind of the thing now. Like, you'll see a lot of kids that don't even want to go to college. They just want to go straight to playing professionally. So You get paid to play basketball, man. It's a dream. Like, you know, we, we sort of take it for granted sometimes. Like, we really play basketball for a living. Like, and that's... And that's why it's, you know, for me, I would never give up my college experience. But some of these guys that are top level talents, like, man, they're just skipping college and going right to play like professional basketball. It's crazy. And, wow. and just since we've been in school, mm-hmm. um, it's, it's changing so fast, you know, especially like with this year with, with the new rules and, and kids getting deals and getting paid and stuff it's like it's going to continue to shift and change year by year. So. Well, you think like, right, I mean, you're a couple of years older than me, but like, the first sort of guy that I can remember doing it was like Emmanuel Moutier. He went right. to China instead of doing it. And it's so funny because like he's in our league now. Like we just played him the other day. But, you know, like he was just one of those guys that did it first. And then uh, Terrence Ferguson did it. He went to Australia after that. It's sort of just like a, it was such like a weird thing to do. But then the year that it really cracked was that Lamelo RJ Hampton year. They both went to Australia. I think that just, it just blew up. Yeah, and like, it's so weird. Like you bring that up. So, like, basketball, I don't know what it is about this game, but it just always comes for full circle. Mm-hmm. And it seems to just, like, it makes the world so small. Because, like, you're talking about Moody, and now he's in our league. And now you're talking about LaMelo. And, like, they came here. Like, LaMelo and them came here. Our coach, our head coach yeah, of our team coach. was their head coach for LaMelo and Jello. So, it's just, like, this weird, like, basketball always such, seems to do this. Yeah, it's such a weird, yeah, it's such a weird dynamic. Like, I mean... Over time, you and I will end up knowing that we know the same type of people. We were just talking like I played TBT in Peoria. And I mentioned Peoria and his face was just like, Peoria? Because, you know, no one really goes to Peoria. No one's ever been and said, oh, I went to Peoria. I did this in Peoria. And I said it and you were just like, oh, my God, like that's where my best friends are. That's where my best friends are from. That's where my girl's from. Like It's just crazy. Like, I, yeah, I just don't know how to explain. And it was just this summer. Like, it's just... It's one of those crazy things, man. It's weird. But, but yeah. yeah, I mean, to, to kind of finish up my, my story, my rant, I guess. So um, after that, I ended up in Bosnia. Mm-hmm. COVID hit yeah. literally right after I got there. Um, and one of, one of the craziest things, and I don't even think I've really told you this, is, um, you know, I was in a situation where I got hurt again. So the team was over there taking care of me. I had broken my foot. And so you know how it is when that situation, whenever you're hurt, 
is very difficult because certain teams and organizations handle it differently. And so my situation was like, they were going to take care of my, my health care, which was amazing, which is always a great thing because a lot of teams don't do that. They won't do that, yeah. But then COVID happened. Mm. So then it was like, okay, do I go home? Do I not go home? Long story short, I ended up staying. I stayed through like the beginning stages of like the whole world was shut Crazy down. COVID, I was yeah. in Bosnia by myself. I was living in a hotel. My foot was broken. Wasn't doing anything but eating meals. Um, to, you know, my team did a great job of, you know, taking care of me. And that was, a, that was a crazy experience. Like, it was so tough for me mentally. But it also, like, was in some ways a blessing because I, you know, I kind of see things differently now. Mm-hmm. And I was able to, like, learn a lot about myself. So I moved on from there. I eventually got back home um, late that summer. Yeah. Uh, late June, early July. And then, you know, COVID was obviously in full swing and was lucky enough to get another contract the next year to go back to Bosnia, um, played half the season with the team there, and then was able to, to land an, a deal in North Macedonia, yeah. which uh, obviously you know a lot about because that was your first year out. Yeah. And uh, it's crazy because I had been, you know, I'd been there for a little bit and we were going into cup and that would have been the first time I saw you. Yeah. We actually didn't meet each other, but I, I watch, I remember watching you play cause I come uh-huh. to cup yeah. and uh, you know, you're, we're playing in, in your gym and i remember watching you and then like here we are it's just I know. it was it's such a wild thing because you know it wasn't it was, wasn't even until i got here and the funny thing was like it was my day one so i got here like 11 30 at night i went to the hotel went to bed woke up the next day and like hey we have two practices so like you're coming right so Great. when you get to a new place it's weird like you're you sort of oh man like you're like all right these are the american guys are they cool are they annoying like it's just the same stuff every year obviously i was blessed last year i had great teammates great people great situation in macedonia but like i got here and you had said like how'd you like tft and i'm just like I was weirded out because we never met. We never crossed paths, nothing. So you play? did you play TFT? You played when I had COVID, right? I played, we did. We yeah, played you guys so, one time. Yeah, so it was I like remember, my third game. Yeah, so I remember I had gotten COVID, which obviously was in these videos on YouTube. You go back and watch it, whatever. But I remember laying on the couch just watching those games and stuff. And uh, it's weird, bro. Like, I mean, we were literally right here, like at the same spot for multiple times like in our life and then we just ended up here at the same time in lithuania like Weird. No, there were guys there were guys that just said to me like hey like yeah you're playing with the euro nickel guard and i'm just like yeah but like i had no idea you know <laughs> right. like we had no idea yeah. so it's it's just one of those things man that's just wild um but thankfully yeah you were a cool dude and we we've been kicking, kicking it pretty much well. yeah it's it's crazy both of our stories ending up here so Talk to me about, you know, how you ended up here this year. You know, this is this is only your second year, so this yeah. is my fourth year yeah. um, professionally. But kind of talk to me about your summer after you got home and, you know, kind of deciphering where you wanted to go and, and what you wanted to do and kind of what priority was for you and ultimately how you landed here. Yeah, so for me, I mean, I got – I left Macedonia. I had good stats, good film, everything like that. I was, I was sort of excited – um, you know when you get home well I went to the States so I can't say home because my Australian people will be mad you know, I say home and they, they, they yeah, lose it home, you know my, my second home my, I try and tell them I've got two homes um, so back home with my girlfriend Bethany in Kentucky um, just decided to take you know two weeks off hoops just I went and saw my best friend Mayo um, hung out with Bethany a lot we went to Boston, Maine we traveled a lot and just took time off because, you know, when you're overseas and you're by yourself, that thing, it's draining, man. Like, you're sitting by yourself. You can have your boys and stuff, but at the same time, it's still like you miss your people, you miss your family, your girlfriends, everything. Um, so for me, it was sort of I just needed a quick mental reset. Um, and then Mayo and I just got back into working out. And I think my summer was very focused on, you know, working on skills as a three-man. Um, I had all the form, like pick-and-pop four-man skills. I wouldn't say locked down, but like I did that all through college. So I just wanted to get better as a wing. Uh, My priority was just finding the next spot that would help me keep making steps up. You know, like Lithuania is a great deal, but it didn't come till late. You know, we had, I had offers in Finland, Romania. um, Those teams in Czech Republic that were off, like, well, that were, you know, considering, like there were Germany pro A teams. It was just a bunch of just teams that were there and interested in whatever. 
and they were all great steps. Like, I mean, to to go up one level and then to just keep moving up the European scale. Because I have an Australian passport. Like I'm Australian. I can go back and play in the NBL like in a couple of years. So for me, I did want to go home, but it just wasn't the right time right now. It's not the right time. Like, it's just how, it's just how it is. Um, and then Coach Ovaldis hit me up or hit my agent up. They He said he really liked me, called me. Everything was straight, man. They just offered. They're like, dude, we want you to come and be a 4-3 type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you have to pack some weight on, which is just how it is with everyone, you know? Like, yeah. you got to gain weight. Um, and I was just like, dude, it just seems like the right thing. And I've always had that. Like, everything happens for a reason. Is like my biggest sort of thing I say. But, like, it was just, I would, I'd be stressed out and worried and like, dude, I'm not finding a team. It's getting late. Like, I don't know what's happening. And then, yeah, the Lithuanian deal came across and it was just like perfect, you know? That's one of those things that I don't know how to really relay it to people back home or people mm-hmm. that, you know, don't really understand like what we do mm-hmm. because it's so easy for people to just be like, okay, like you're a hooper, like you play back, you play a game for a living. It's like, okay, yeah, but that doesn't mean our struggles aren't real. You know what I mean? Like we have a lot of stuff that we have to deal with uh, yeah. mentally. And I think that this is a good avenue for us to kind of put that in the air because it doesn't get talked a lot. So no. like when you were just explaining to me, like, like you're saying it's getting late. Yeah. I don't think people really understand when you don't know when your next paycheck's coming yeah. or you don't know where you're going. Like literally one day you're just going to have to pack your bag and go somewhere. Yeah, and it could it be today or it could be, two months from now and like like you said you're trying to move through life also being prepared but also you know when you're home you're trying to have fun you're trying to make sure you see your people because you know you're not going to see them when you leave so you know for me it was kind of the same it's always the same thing like even in year four like i'm still learning and figuring out Mm -hmm. like how to divvy up my time with my people yeah how to like what i need to be focusing on like Mm -hmm. on my body how much time I need to be putting into on the court, off the court, mentally, physically, but then also just like, how do you deal with, okay, each calendar month that goes by, you know, you get into August, you get into September, you're like, shit, like, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. Like the season is starting and, and you know, you have that clock in the back of your mind. Mm So talk about like what, I mean, for me, like it's music, it's writing. Um, what is like something that you lean on in terms of, I mean, when, I just, when things are stressing you out in terms of the hoop and stuff. It, it went sort of started getting later and later. And later. So, so I was working out every day, but then I'd start just sort of, you just sort of get itchy, man. man. Like, like, it's like, it's weird, weird because then, then you're, you're with people, people, people are like, dude, you're, you're average 20 a game in Vulcan League last week. You're average 17. Like, you're going to be fine. Like, you're going to get a job. Like, yeah, I know I'm going to get a job, but it's like, which one's it going to come? Which one's the right move? Like, you're going to make a decision of, does, does this system, system fit, fit me? Does, does this league fit me? Does this? Like, it's a li- it's a life move, oh, right? Man. You gotta go. Li- you gotta go live there for nine months you out of the year. By yourself Maybe for nine you know. Months. Last year yeah. I was gone for and ten. For me, my thing this year was like, I mean, when I'm over here, my vice is playing video games with my friends, being on Facetime and stuff. But when I was back home, it was just you know me and Bethany, my girlfriend, we're just playing like we'd play board games. Like we'd play board games. We'd play. We'd watch like videos. We we have a dog together, Bindi. We'd go on hikes and walks with her and throw the, like just stupid stuff. Not stupid stuff, but like stuff that's so small and seems like everyday stuff for other people was like my vice. Right. Like it was just like that's that's what's getting me through this. You know, yeah. having someone to sit there and play Phase Ten or Rummy Cub or like go get a pup cup at Duncan for my dog and her being excited. Like it just. It's crazy how that excites me because it's for other people, it's just normal life. It's normal. Like we only get stuff. that for two, three months. I get that two, three months, months a year. And, and then it's like, I'm out. I'm and like you said, like, I mean, you got to pack up and you sort of just got to like slowly get ready to leave because like I got picked up and it was like, hey, can you be on the plane in four days? And I had to tell them like, no. Like I had to say like, can you push it back? To-? Like they were like, sign Friday. We want you here Monday. And I was like, dude, the same day you were coming in. Yeah. Like, oh, our point guard's coming in a little late. We want him soon. I'm just like, dude, I'm going to need until at least Wednesday or Thursday. Like, I can't just turn to my girlfriend and be like, hey, I'm packing up. I'm leaving in two days. Like, that's just something that no one that's really awesome. understands. Yeah. And for us, like you said, it's good for us so we can sit here and rant about it. People still might watch it and be like, 
you're seriously complaining about playing basketball. Right. Like, right. you know, and it's not, we're not complaining in any way. Like, it's the best life I could ever possibly exactly. ask for. But that, that side and that aspect of mental health and that side of, like, finding things that make you happy or help you get through these situations are, like, real deal. Like, I love playing basketball, but I haven't, I'm not going to see my family for, like, this, it'll go on, like, two years almost Man. by the time I get to go home. So, like, and that... That would be the longest time it's been, you know? So, and I think that once we go through this more, like, we'll, we'll do ones over Christmas. Like, you're going to see, people are going to see, like, how we are, as uh, like, how we feel. Because, I mean, most of the time, we, we got to obviously be politically correct sometimes. We can't just turn around and be like, oh, you know, this guy sucks, that guy sucks, I hate this, I hate that, right? But you'll still see, like, we'll still be able to sit there and be like, hey, it's Christmas time. Um, it's miserable. Yeah, like... You know, like... It's- like, dude, I, like... The things we do for the game. Yeah. It's like, it's like I love this shit so much. I love going but to it's, practice. But it's like, man, I'm not going to lie. It's December 24th, yeah. and I would rather be with my family yeah. right now. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, And it's just it's the sacrifices we have to make as basketball players is just like wild. And it's stuff we're going to get through. But like, since we've been here in Lithuania, it's been pretty dope. Like, I mean, yeah, me, I'll you, yeah. our boy K, we've yeah. worked it all out. Um, something that we're going to try and implement into the podcast is our boy K. And then even uh, Thomas. we've been we've been <laughs> playing 2K almost every second night. Like, yeah. we suck. All three of us don't know how to shoot properly. It's like my first 2K in four years. These guys barely play it as well. Yeah. Um, but they come over and we set up a projector. I'll have to add, again, I've got photos. I'll put them right here. Um... And we've been playing 2K tournaments. And that, that is, like, that's the stuff you do to get through, your, like, your afternoons and your nights. Because, I mean, practice is, we still practice two times a day. We go in every day. Even if it's scheduled or not, we're in there at, like, 11 to about 12, 12.30 every day. And then in the night times, 5, 5.30 to, like, 7, 7.30. And that's every day. And I love it. Like, the way it's been set is so good. Because other leagues, like... Sometimes they're just like, hey, we only have the gym at six to nine, six yeah. to nine, and that's it. And that's, it's, we've just been, you know, we get our work in. The one thing I will say is like being here so far, you know, we haven't been, I mean, we've almost, for me, it's going to be a month. You're, mm-hmm. You came a, like a week after yeah, me, I think. Week after, a couple of days so after um, this is the first year that I can say like, I can get in the gym pretty much mm-hmm. any day of the week, any time. Yeah. Um, our assistants are great. Like, yeah. We can hit them up any time of the day. If they're in the city, if they're in town, like they're going to come help us work out. We're trying to get better. And like, to me, that's a big deal. Cause I'm big. I'm just, bi- I'm a gym rat. Like I'm, I'm like how you are. Like, I just yeah. like being in the gym, um, whether that's on the court or, or with weights and, and, you know, training physically, like that's, that's a big deal to me. So like, I've really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, what do you think, you know, what's, what's the vibe? Like, Describe to the people back home with the city and, and just in general, maybe the country, what, what the Lithuania is like so far. Dude, it's, it's, it's nice. And like we talk about it a lot, like it's nice. Where we are, it's very, it's very small. Um, you know, it's, one, it's basically one road up and down. And, but for me, it's weird because it sort of feels right. And it feels good for me right now. Last year was tough. We could, we could get in the gym, but it also was like, we had to drive there or we didn't have cars and this like this year thankfully we have a car jackson and i have just been you know carpooling and working out and stuff but like i really wasn't working as hard as i could be working last year and this year already dude like i'm in the gym every day so and and as long as we can get in the gym like we found a nice cafe we go to the restaurant we go to is really nice we went to conus today that's right up the road like I, lithuania is clean it's nice the people are nice and like polite type, you know, that it's it's hard where we are. The English isn't too great, but they still try their best to help. Um, like I've been in other places where you just try and say English and they're just like, no, and they leave type stuff. Like, you know, they get out of your way. Yeah. Um, but it's good that these people have been like very understanding i know i'm saying this now but tomorrow we're probably going to run into someone that's been that's <laughs> well i was going to say just as we're as we're recording this tonight just so you know you know i was cussed at you know on my way over to yeah. to your apartment today yeah. but yeah. no i mean in general i think that people are very um welcoming um i think that like the city we're in is small but uh like the environment like we've seen at the games firsthand you know we've played our first two games mm-hmm. um league games that have been both at home and the crowd has been like oh 
Well, they've been amazing. Like I, I expected it, you know, I expected it for the first game because we played Zagreus, which is, you know, Euro League team for, for those of you who don't know at home. But um, they were even like, they even surpassed what I thought it was going to be the first game because like you could tell they understood basketball and they yeah. appreciated it. Yeah. But then second game, you know, we played just last night and, you know, on a Sunday at 5, 5 p.m. game, yeah. we had a crazy energetic crowd and definitely helped contribute to our first win. Yeah. Um, I'm like excited to have the fans back. I don't know like about you, uh, but like playing with fans, like we miss them. Like dude, it's crazy. Like it's, it's something that like I thrive on it. I always have, I don't know what it is. Like in college, everything, I just thrived on it. Like my energy, I'm just like an energy guy. Like I'll go get rebounds. I'll go do something that's reckless. You know, I'll go, I'll hit a three and I'll like turn to the crowd and chirp. Like good crowds, bad crowds, it doesn't matter. Like if we're in the home or away. Um, so like, dude, just having them here has just been sick. Like, and everyone's loving it. You can tell, like you said, they're just very basketball orientated. Like they know it. They don't just get excited because other people next to them are getting excited. Like they're into the game. They're they're throwing stuff. They're blowing their vuvuzelas the whole time, whistling, like cheering at everything, you know. Um, and it's been it's been sick, like you said. Like the first two games, they've been sort of. It's been a great start for us. Yeah, I mean, it really it's has. been a great start. We got close to Jalgris, who like what four six points was by six in the end. Six total. It's, by the way, this is our first year up in the top league as a team, as an organization. In I think thirty years, something like that. It's the first time in the LKL, LKL as it being the LKL. Right, right. Um, so winning. So that yesterday was the first win, correct? Yes, they were like our in first history. Win in, in yeah in history is so, LKL four for Yonaba. Yonaba. Yeah, so, so. Man, yeah, and, and then you, you can, can tell, tell what it means to the people. people. Like the, the fans, fans were all high fiving. They cheered like the last ten seconds, seconds of the clock running, running down. Like they realized it. Like, like we, we won, won a game. game. Yeah, and like you know, fortunately, we were up pretty big most of the game. Yeah. They're, they're all going. staying there, they're and they're all like going. fourth quarter going nuts. They yeah. wanted to see all the way they through. I mean, stop. it was yeah. it was it was crazy. Um, I mean, you can just tell, like in general, like it's a basketball country, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's going to be exciting, especially like seeing watching. I mean, we've been here watching like when we're not playing. You know, we're just we got our practice days and we're laying low. We've been watching other games. The games have been really good. Like the league is up for grabs this year. I feel like. The league, the league is just, yeah, like you said, up for grabs. I mean, we just watched Algris play again. That's their third game. I think all the games have been in single digits. One game went to double OT. They went to double OT with the team we just beat by 20 last night. So the, the league as a whole, obviously people are going to turn up when it's Algris. Like, dude, that's a EuroLeague team. These guys are paying this much money. Like, these fans love them by this much, you know. But um, I really think that it's it's going to be a really, really interesting league, man. It's, it's and it's exciting, you know. We've watched it all. We've seen all the media days. Like it's right. just, it's exciting. It's a real deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where, where, it, where it heads. Um, because like you said, it's, it's early. Um, but moving on. Uh, one of the things, you know, we had been talking about because, you know me, like I'm a big music head, mm-hmm. and I'm starting to find out that you are as yeah. well. So it's one of those things that since we've been here in the short time frame, we've talked a bunch about music and just different artists and. Mm-hmm. Diff- all kinds of different types of stuff uh, musically. So we had a big drop. We had multiple drops just since we've been here. Yeah. So before we even get into like the multiple drops and all of that, like and what you're trying to lean towards in terms of like Drake, all of that Kanye and stuff. So he's not going to say it and I can. It's Jay just dropped an album the other day. Well, not the other day. What, two weeks ago, two Fridays ago? Maybe three yeah. Fridays ago? Yeah. So he loves to make music, as you can tell by his mic. His mic, he had more stuff on. He's got his headset. Like, he's real deal. Like, I'm going to have to set this stuff. And uh, he just dropped an album. And, like, dude, how, how is that? Like, you said, like, you mentioned it at the start. And you sort of mentioned it as your vice of, like, you know, making music, writing music, things like that. Like, dude, how, like, how is that? Like, being a basketball player and then, like, like a, a musician, musician or an artist, artist you know? So it's, it's just interesting, I guess. Um... You know, it's something that I started doing, like writing, like physically writing out songs when I was like actually like probably 14. And it started as like a thing with my friends. Like we just used to do as fun. And like, you know, I had I had my uh, one of my best friends, Hunter Morwitz, like back home, like I'd just be kicking at his house. And I'll never forget uh, his older brother, who is, you know, like we're close. We're basically like family, his family and mine. And um i'm at his house one night and 
you know, we're like basically like messing around with raps and stuff like that. And his older brother Mason, like, he's like, yo, like you, you do music and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll, you know, as a kid, you know, I'm messing yeah. around. Well, we end up like we messing around. We record a song like in his basement, mm -hmm. like just recording on some laptop. And that was like kind of the beginning of it. Um, but like, I never took it like serious in terms of like, I could do this as like a, a career or whatever, but I was super passionate about it. Yeah. And all through like school and stuff, I was, I was interested in it and, and wrote, but never like released music. And, um, you know, in terms of this album distance that I just released a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, it's a, it's a crazy story. Um, it's, it's basically kind of, you know, an individual talking about, I mean, lots of just different like truths about myself and me learning and growing as a person. Mm -hmm. um, but the album kind of, you know, it's 11 songs and it touches on a lot of different vibes. Um, but it's, you know, it's real close to home and it was all written and recorded, you know, either in uh, Bosnia or Macedonia last mm -hmm. year. So um it's a it's a real interesting story like when you when you look at the background of it because of like I think recording it like it's called distance you know it's it's recorded you know far from home from a distance it's delivered from a distance and we actually like we didn't plan this but like mm -hmm. we were going to drop it like when I was home and you know as I'm learning dropping music and and making sure everything's perfect is it's difficult and it's mm -hmm. time consuming and you know I've got other stuff going on in my life um we actually like ended up dropping it when i was out here mm -hmm. because like you know this deal came out of out of nowhere for me as well it was late but uh i was planning on being in the states and uh so it's kind of like like you said everything happens for a reason but it was you know it's something i'm, I'm really proud of so it's my first like actual official project that's yeah. on all platforms and stuff um so yeah those of you who are interested you know yeah, uh, we'll, albums distance j3 you know we're gonna go plug it plug it everywhere yeah you know, i mean it it'll be it'll be up edited now like on like where you're at mm -hmm. and stuff like in your face but it'll be like we'll i'll tag all these spotify facebook whatever links you have like it's all going to be in there and like and it's not just like hey we're doing a podcast we're gonna shamelessly plug his music like it's legit music you know like, that's what it feels beats. like <laughs> yeah it feels like he's like ah, hey here's a couple of euros i go get a haircut next week no it's like his music it's actually it's great like it's great music and I, i'll say it like if i told if, if it sucked i'd tell him it sucked <laughs> but we you know we we're just sitting around the other day playing 2k and it went from you know we'll listen to drake or nba young boy and then went to his stuff and it's like dude this is great you know and as a hooper like it's awesome like and for me i make content like i love right. making youtube and stuff wish i could sing wish i could rap can't do it <laughs> to save my life so like bro it's it's just it's super dope like for you to be able to do it and push through and we'll put some of your songs like through editing and stuff as yeah. well like and you guys will hear it um and we're also going to start something that sort of pushed us to start content was we spoke about starting his youtube channel um which we'll plug down low as well we're going to like get his music up there we're going to have him he's going to start doing some breakdowns of his songs of the album all together some music videos things like that it's just cool and it's it's going to be an awesome sort of branch out for us and work to do while we're in lithuania on top of this yeah know? it's something to like kind of keep us busy but it's also like obviously we're both interested in it oh man like i mean it's bringing my like i like making content and there's a lot i can still build and work on and then you love I, making music i so. do want to apologize for the uh the ben simmons quote on on one of those tracks storytelling yeah because i'm coming at one of your fellow aussies so. yeah so yeah we're sitting here and having having a good time playing 2k and he just you know he went Right at Ben Simmons. and uh, Right at Ben Simmons. And it's he obviously didn't know me when he said it because he wouldn't say it now. But it was great. It was like, oh, wow, that was a good line. So it was, yeah, he said, at least he apologizes. That's all that matters. Um, bro, dude. But like like we said, like we've been, we've been chilling, driving around and stuff. And like it was the day I landed in Lithuania is the day that Certified Lover Boy dropped. Is it, was it the day? It was that day. It was that night. So I landed, I landed that night and downloaded it right away and was listening to it and Khalil walked in that day so you were the first one in there mm -hmm. I walked in right behind you met you Khalil walked in right behind me it was just us three to start off with like we're the cool like we're all cool now and we're friends but it was just that three starting awkward situation but that was the first thing that came up like hey what do you think and then Khalil's listening to to CLB and he's like what do you think look what I'm listening to and I'm like dude this is tough this is and it was sort of like a way for us to bond like no started, right away 
right away. Right away. Like, like right bro, away. we're just because like listen to is this. I'm not gonna lie, it'd be super awkward if you were like, man, I don't like that shit. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah like, like a Kanye fan. You no, know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, and we'll get into that as well. Um, but it's a uh, it's interesting because it is like. It's almost like one of those things, like, you keep using the word vices, but it's, like, one of the... I can't, like, stress enough, like, this came out and, like, it takes up time for us. It's, like, something for us to, like, do, to talk, like, so much to talk about. Like, you know, we're rotating it when we're when we're in the car or driving or we're working out or whatever. It's, like, it kind of, like, lifts your spirit a little bit. Like, you have something, like, you know, in your life that, like, is, like, something that you can kind of hold on to or clutch on to. something that we can bond over or whatever yeah. talk about. But uh, man, you know what are we? You know we're a couple weeks into into this drop. What are, I mean, overall thoughts, like how you feel, bro? Like the whole album's really good. Like and like you said, like you and I, we listen to it. Like if we've got headphones in, we know we're both listening to So Far Love Boy. We're in the car, we're listening to it. You know, yeah, yeah. we just really try That's to just we're right. catching lyrics here and there. We're catching stuff on the side. Like we're just catching stuff every day almost. And like I've always been a massive Drake fan, and you obviously yeah. have too. You know, and that's where it comes from and that's where like you said like the other day we came up you came to me and you said what's your least favorite song on this on this album and it's hard right it's hard for us to do it because even when you said so for me we had to come up and say like f- fountains and way too sexy yeah. and the only reason we said way too sexy was that they were forcing it like to be the track you know right. to be that single yeah it was like it was almost like which obviously the nature of the song is kind of, it's like a troll song like mm-hmm. we've kind of labeled it as that but it was like for the listener like us that's like an active listener versus like a passive listener somebody that's like not really into the full project way too sexy is going to be a lot of people's favorite song oh, you know yeah. what i'm saying 100%. like that's going to be like a quotable quotable song but like for us it's like i mean like we could do without it like yeah. i would say like for me it's way too sexy but then, like, you mentioned Fountains, we, and I had mentioned Fountains, er, yeah. like, earlier in the week. But, like, that song we started listening to more, it's, like, growing exactly on us. Like, right. I kind of, like... I feel like every time we get in the car, Fountains comes on, and we're, yeah. like, singing along. Like, damn, all right. What's next? Like, what do we take out Yeah, now? and yeah. just picture just picture us, you know, we're in this, our Ford Fiesta. <laughs> yeah, a little and, and we're Ford listen Fiesta. And we're listening to uh, CLB, and we got on Fountains, and we're Fountains. both singing like we're girls in in dude. this in this whip driving in lithuania dude we, it's crazy like and it's hard also like what what are your top three songs favorites yeah yeah uh so like for me like music and like movies kind of like go hand in hand for yeah. me so like when somebody says like top five or top three it's always yeah. like it's such a mood thing oh yeah depends on the day but like i know me and you both like poppy's home oh yeah that's already my number that's one. like so it's i do I, does it have to be in order? Are you going to make me go? Nah, nah, just give it All right, I'm going to say Poppy's Home's in there. Um, I'm like, you know, as an artist myself, like, uh, I really, like, get into, like, the writing of a song and, like, mm-hmm. seeing how much was put into the writing of a song and what, like, like somebody was feeling when they wrote that. So, like, the remorse is the outro. Yeah. And that's up there for me because, like, he's talking about real shit. Like, yeah. specific people in his life that, you know help him get where he's at and how he can't repay him back you know like there's no salary cap on that like that shit was crazy to me um in terms of like writers like i gotta go like into deep or tsu's Mm -hmm. up there for Mm -hmm. me because like i don't get sick of those like you you're gonna be able to rotate those forever because they just like you don't even have to listen to what he's saying but if you listen to what he's saying you're like yo yo like and just the rhythm the cadence yeah, I got I got TSU up there, man. Like, smooth out stage, you know, and it's just a vibe. And then I have You Only Live Twice just because it's such a vibe. Like, what do you yeah. think about Ross on that one? Rick right. Ross, it, it's just, I feel like he's, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't listen to enough Ross to be like, right. this is a great Ross verse, this is a mid Ross verse. Yeah, you know, so yeah. for me, the whole song as a whole, I really like, I love. You know, but dude, I don't know. It, it's crazy. So you got, you got that one. You've got just Poppy's home in there and, and Poppy's home. That's why I had written down here. Man. But like, I mean, I could go through and change that tomorrow. Yeah. So like the ones that are like growing on me, yeah. like those. Two, I think it's two and three. Yeah. Or no, it's three, four. So you've got a uh, girls one girls, 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 which is like another one of those radio singles. Yeah. It's like one of those radio, but like 
like the fourth or fifth day it came out, I was like, this is this tough, is that one. Tough. And then in the Bible. In the Bible. Stupid. Right after that same thing, I'm like. Like, I could put it in the Bible. He came on and said, okay, okay. I was like. And then the features. I love the features on that one. Crazy. The features it's, in the whole thing was solid, bro. Solid. In my opinion, like, when you're talking about, like, that album and you're talking about him in general, it's like, for people to, like, really mess with it and, like, say it's as good as it is, which I feel like most people mm -hmm. feel like it's good. But you got the other side of it, of course, you know, with, with Kanye fans mostly and other people. Yeah. But, like, to be doing it this long, it's like the only – we were talking one day, like, the only other person I compare it to in anything, like sports, whatever, mm -hmm. would be LeBron. Oh, yeah. Like being so great and dominating like your profession for so long, for that long. like Consistent. it's got to be like it's got to be Drake and LeBron. Like, and it's weird because they kind of have the same timeline. Like they both kind of like came together, sort of thing. LeBron obviously and a I couple think... years before, but like their growth between like when Drake was coming up big time, LeBron was really just like blowing up in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, you're talking like, I mean, earliest would be like oh nine, but like 2010, pretty let's say 2010 to now. Yeah, for sure. Like you're talking over a decade, yeah, for sure. of just dominance. Like, but it's it's crazy. Um, let's you want to let's talk Kanye then. So like, let's talk about this beef. For let's the let's, beef is crazy. I mean, like, how do we feel about it? I think I think a lot of it is fueled with like both our albums are coming out. Will we ever know what the real beef is? No. Will we ever think of it? Do we think it's real? Like that's I think there is, there's an underlying beef there. Yeah. I feel, obviously, I'm just a random 23, almost 24-year-old Australian guy that plays basketball. <laughs> I, would have no, I would have no clue, right? But I think that a lot of it does get fueled around their release times. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, now we're at this. Oh, this is Kanye's diss to Drake. Oh, this is Drake's diss to Kanye. Oh, let's listen to Donda. Donda's mid. Or Donda's better than CLB. Right. CLB's mid. Bro, like that, that just, that builds sales, that builds streams, that builds hype around both albums. It's been going on it forever. Perfect. It's been going on forever. Like they used to say with Hov's old, old records, like they would used to spin them backwards and they're like, oh, he's saying all like this devil oh, no. music. He's saying all this crazy stuff. Everything, like, bro. Because yeah. with him, it was all like, oh, he's Illuminati. Yeah. And they were like, oh, oh play this record back. It oh. like has Illuminati like messages in it and stuff like that, which it was like, does it or is it just like about sales? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. I think that people forget that, like, I think that sometimes, like, it, it should be looked at like a sport. Like, I think it's, like, I don't even know if, like, I would call it beef, but it's, like, they're just kind of, like, competing. Yeah. And it's, like, they're actually, like, pushing each other to, like... Greater and greater. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, like, why do we got to look at it like, oh, they actually, like, hate each other. They hate each other. Like, maybe they do, maybe they don't. We probably never know. Yeah. But, like, at the end of the day, I think it's, like... We end up benefiting from it because it's like we get great, we get content great content, from, great music from both of them. Whether it's real or not, it's like it feels real to us because we're like in the moment listening to this shit. Yeah. Like, and and we were sitting there talking today about Donda. Like, so it came out a few days before. Listened to the whole thing multiple times. Like how I was doing Certified Lover Boy, listening through, and I was like, dude, this is like this is pretty good. Like I like it a lot, right? And the same thing with people that just listen to CLB like once or twice and they're like, ah, it's mid. I'm like, dude, you have to listen and let yeah, that okay. thing marinate, right? Yeah. So we went back and you and I have listened to a couple of Donda songs the last few days and we're like, dude. There's a couple on there. That there are a couple that are like, mm -hmm. whoa. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, oh, I could yeah. listen to these on repeat type thing. Yeah. I think that next episode, what we sort of have to do, we have to sit down and we have to write, like we have to go through Donda, listen to it go through CLB and listen to it and like mix them and find what our top like 10 between yeah. the both albums are. Yeah. Because I find that once we take, like I've taken time away from Donda, I think if this week I take time away from CLB, go it'll be down. great to then go boom and, and then mix, them, mix yeah. them together. Yeah. So for me, like when you're talking about, if you're like comparing, which I hate, by the way, it's like, they're two completely, like they're going for two completely different things when you're talking about like the actual like albums in general. Like, Donna's, like, this is complete, like, soul vibes. This is, like, he's talking about his, you know, his mother, his deceased mother. And then you got, like, Drake, who's talking about, like, his scarred heart. Yeah. You know, just all cold-blooded yeah. player boy type stuff. Yeah. And, when, but when you put them together and you just look at, like, overall track lists and stuff like that, for me, like, Donda just has a few more that are, like, eh. 
Yeah. Could have done without that one. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, how for us, we're like, like it's hard for us to be like, oh, I'll go without that in yeah. Certified Lover Boy. Yeah. I There's a couple you can grab in Donda and be like, yeah. So, like, if you're, if you're going to say, like, okay, let's say we throw out two from mm-hmm. CLB, I would probably have thrown out like five or six from, from Kanye. Donda. From, yeah, yeah, sure. from Donda. For sure. Like, for me personally. But yeah. just as, like, how I feel about that, there's people on the other side that are, like, they do the other side. Throughout half a Because, like, I know a lot of people that are, like, like what, what was that video I put up the other day where... Uh, <laughs> oh, it was the like dude saying, this is why Certified Lava Boy sucks. Yeah. yeah. What do you... Like, all right, I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, it's, that's your opinion. That's the thing about, like, music is, like, I mean, it's all open for interpretation. That's how art is. Like, just yeah. the way somebody can look at a... A painting and be like this is trash and somebody else can look at it and be like this is the most beautiful like thing I've ever million seen. Dollars. exactly like how do you yeah. put a price on that like uh it's it's crazy to me but um yeah i mean it's it's pretty cool to see how like music has influenced and then also like the other thing like we haven't talked about really was like have you noticed like we go into our locker room and like we've got people from all over the world in our locker room they're all listening to seal CL- oh yeah all over the world in the morning at night we're like how can one person like have that reach yeah that shit's crazy crazy to me like yeah guy dude from juan from colombia uh manu comes in he's from belgium Belgium. the dudes from all the guys from eustace was the other day i'm sitting there eustace sits next to me in my uh in our in the locker room you know our other point guard that's he's from lithuania and like he's singing like Word for word, which he speaks great English, by the way. But I was just kind of caught off guard. Yeah, I'm just it like, catches you, like, oh my god, yo, what? Yeah. Like, people are with it, like, man. It's like his line where he's like, "Was it 4 a.m. in Germany? Can't believe that they heard it." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like it's true though. It's, it's so tr- crazy, it's like, so true. How have they heard about you? You know, like, and that's that's how large the reach is, man. Like that market for him is unreal. But like I said, like, bro, we'll get. This like we love talking about music. There's gonna be more like bro. We sat there listening to Rap Caviar on on Spotify today, and like we're just like we need to listen to this, listen to that. I think that it's something that we can branch off like all the like all these videos. Like we can sit here and just go through that. Let's talk basketball, man. Yeah. So back to it being more of a basketball thing. Obviously, it's the Worldwide Hoopers podcast. Some people are gonna like the music. Some people aren't. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm gonna segment them off in you on YouTube. You guys can skip whatever you want to skip. But like, what we wanted to sort of do was something different. Like, obviously, we want to talk to a lot of our guys, like friends. Like, I've got a bunch of guys I know that are, that are hoopers overseas, college, whatever. You know, um, and then they have friends. Like, there's there's a way. Like we said, basketball is such a. It's almost like a community. It's a fraternity. Like, we'd be able to get people on this show. And that's our goal to have a lot of guests over our time. So one of the things is getting guests on. Another thing was we want to roll off games, sort of throwback games. Like we're going to watch a lot of NBA this year as well and talk a lot about NBA this year, but sort of classic throwback games each uh, each week. And Jax has been sitting down watching a bunch of games at home. Like that's another thing, a vice Get, right you know like highlights man around, highlights yeah, sit there and watch games and stuff so that's sort of jackson's thing to find a game each week and we're gonna sit there and talk about it so like this week's game jackson what is it man so i mean can we we can call it a classic it's been five oh, it's years but it's, oh, it's to me it's a cla- i mean it was it was almost it was, it was an instant classic yeah so we're we're you know 2016 february 27th mm-hmm. uh we got okc golden mm-hmm. state all right, so, you know, for those of you who don't remember, we've got KD and Russ, which ends up being their last year in OKC. And then you've got arguably the greatest team of all time with the best record of all time. They end yeah. up going 73-9. and nine. And Steph's game winner from right inside half court, um, which that shot to me, like, I just feel like it did so much for basketball. It just changed basketball. Yeah, I mean, which it, the game was already trending that he was way already because doing that type of stuff that whole year, like right. taking those crazy shots. But like the the commentary in that was like, "God say have the ball." They're not going to call a timeout. Steph Curry, bang! bang! Like, and dude, I didn't watch much NBA. I never do, but I seem to always catch these type of games. And I was watching it, and it's like no timeout called, which the traditional way of basketball is they get a bucket, Advanced okay, call timeout, let's run a play. Advanced, yeah. It was give the ball to Steph Curry, dribble up the court, and just launch it, Steph. He was just inside halfway and shot it, banged it in. Like, 
it changes the way basketball is played and it has changed it now like i mean it's the, the way the game is trending is just in that more long three pointers quick paced basketball you know so talking about changing the game we're looking at his stat line right now he's 14 for 24 12 for 16 from three <laughs> he shot 16 threes in that game but made 12 so yeah i mean so you know he ends up shooting eight free throws he's six for eight ends up with 46 Dude. six assists three rebounds a couple steals i mean so growing up i mean can you imagine take i mean i've never even shot 16 threes in a game obviously no. but can you imagine being bef- pre this era, you know, pre this Steph Curry era, shooting double digit threes in a game? Even shooting eight threes in a game. I mean, that that's absurd. ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. And, and I think one of the reasons I wanted to start off with this game is because it just stuck out in my mind. Like, this, this was one of those moments, like, as a kid, you think about, you know, if, if a kid was watching that game, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, we're watching. You're watching the best players in the world, and you always want to imitate them or be them or you know aspire to be them. And they're watching Steph pull from over 30 feet. So every kid since 2016 has been doing that. Has been doing it, yeah. and it's like, you know, I see it when I go home because you know one of the things I do when I'm home is I, you know, I train kids. You know, we yeah. we work out. I, you know, I do skill development and that kind of thing. And all the kids that I that I train love to shoot the three. Oh, that's crazy. And I'm amazed actually at how young. And strong these kids are oh, that they can shoot threes because be I remember at our age like shooting a three oh, when I was like in fifth sixth grade was difficult like I remember that being thing. In fifth sixth grade and shooting free throws in games and yeah. having to like jump yeah. and get up there like yeah. it's crazy I mean that's, wh- <laughs> that's a classic game wh- where we speak about it I mean one of the things that always seems to happen in these games is is you know you forget about who else was in the game I mean yeah. we're talking about KD in his prime russ arguably in his prime you got kd goes for 37 <laughs> 12 rebounds five assists shoots 50 percent from the field you know you got russ out there triple double machine he ends up with 13 assists seven rebounds 26 points didn't shoot it great but i mean talk about i mean let's say for example this moment never happens i mean maybe okc together yeah maybe okc's together maybe you know they don't have that kind of same fear, or same mental hurdle that they couldn't get over beating these guys. I mean, the, people forget right? they had them down 3-1. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I mean, and just in terms of like what took place in the NBA from, from that game on. In that year? Oh, wild. One of the greatest NBA seasons of all time. Because that's Kobe's last year. That's LeBron coming back from 3-1. That's the Warriors having 73-9 and nine and coming back from 3-1. Like, bro, crazy year. Like... The way the basketball world has changed since then as well is insane. Like five years from then, Golden State is seemingly like the same team. They still have Clay, Steph, Draymond. <laughs> but like during between now and then, they had KD. KD's gone. Russ isn't even close to OKC anymore. Like it's crazy where the NBA is now where it was 2016. Like uh, teams shifted to beating the Warriors rather than beating LeBron right. in those few years. Right. I'm looking at the roster as you're saying that right now, and almost, well, none of the guys on OKC are, are no, currently no, no. playing for them. No, no, no. And, you know, the three main characters for Golden State are, are still currently there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, it also speaks to, like, and it seems like each year, you know, we get deeper into, into the league. These guys are just, you know, they're moving around yeah. much more. What is your thought, you know, people – have the super team talk yeah. debates all the time. What is, so what's your opinion on, you know, guys moving versus staying or quote unquote teaming up? I mean, how do you feel about that? I hate losing. And I know that these guys hate losing. It's not about like, yes, it's about the money sometimes, most of the time. Right. But they, they it's about the money because they, they can get that money in the NBA. But like guys want to win, man. There's guys that sit around in, in teams and they don't win or they don't see themselves winning in the foreseeable future, so they move on. And I'm I'm fine with that. Like it's like you and I, imagine you and I signed we signed to Yonova and we have to be here for, for ten years and retire here, right? Even though we we lose every year. Like you we we'd be like, why? You know? That's not a sound business decision. Yeah, like I wanna so, go somewhere else. So one of the ways I always looked at it was like, um, 
So like, say you work a regular nine to five job and yeah. you know, you make uh, X amount of dollars every year, but you, you have, a, you end up having a better opportunity. Okay. I can go work for a better company. Yeah. You know, maybe it's more money, maybe it's less, whatever, but I know I'm going to be more successful. I know I'm going to be more happy here. It's a good business move. It's a good life move for me. Mm-hmm. What would you say to that person? Go man, take it. Like, go, go ahead. ahead. Like that's going to be, that's going to be great for you. Great yeah. move for you, your family, whatever. For whatever reason, in sports, like it's oh, not like, it's not like that in sports, but it's it's all an emotional connection. Like all the fans love the their fans, players, yeah. all the all the the teams love their players. Like no one's trying to give up Kevin Durant, no one's trying to give up a LeBron James. Like they want them to be with them forever. It's like a it's like a girlfriend. Like right. you don't want to get rid of that person. Right. You know, like you're not trying to get rid of anyone. But if at the end of the day they don't want to be there, then they have to go. You know, and that's like you said, like it's like a job, but. I mean, I don't, yeah. Uh, for me, I think it's fine. I think that as long as the NBA is balanced, like if there's a couple super teams, like, it's always going to happen. It's always gonna That's happen. my thing too is like, you know, you get a lot of like old heads yeah. that are always like, you know, su- we didn't have, like there was oh, no yeah, super yeah, teams. It's like, uh, did you see those Celtic teams? Oh did you see even the Bulls <laughs> team? Like, yeah, I mean. You yeah. grabbed the greatest rebounder of all time. Yeah. Dennis just, Robin. I, and then Scotty I, Pippen. I, Michael Jordan. Pretty much all of the great teams. Great teams had three guys that are like borderline, you yeah. know, whatever you want to call them, superstar, all star yeah. players. Like, yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing too is like, as players are so, like, I want to play with other good players. Would I ever go to a team and be like, oh, I want to play like with just okay players? Yeah, and then like expect to win. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a weird debate. Um. Obviously, LeBron catches a lot of flack for for oh, leaving to sure. Miami, um, but you got Boston, you know that they that deal happened, yeah. which you know people never really. I don't no, know why. I don't know why. It's sort of just it's LeBron. Everyone just doesn't like yeah, LeBron, LeBron and what he does. Such a, he's like it a scapegoat. Leaves a taste in people's mouths. But it's like, dude, like the Celtics had KG, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. Like, yeah, that team that was stacked. That wasn't just, like... But I think also, in terms of they didn't win... They won one, right? They didn't win that many. Well, so if they, they were more won. dominant, then people would be like, oh, well, they were a super team. Look at that. Exactly. LeBron That's came exactly. into Miami, and they were finals right away. Finals, 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 finals. Right. Win or lose, they were in the finals. No, yeah, that's the thing. And then, like, you know, Le- LeBron got super criticized because in his first year, he didn't win. You know, they went there, and then they're like, well, it's like, now you're discrediting Dallas. It's like, how about we just call it what it is? Just like, appreciate greatness. Appreciate a great year. Like Dirk had a great year. Oh my God. <laughs> like, they had a great team, you know. It's absurd. Like, you can't, you can't they do anything a, about that. I mean, but either way you spin it, I mean, we've seen some, some great basketball over the years. Um, and it seems like, to me, like, each year I'm more and more excited to see. Like, it's almost exciting to see, like, wow, this guy's going to be in this team this year. Yeah. Like, what's that fit going to be like? It's so fun. Like, it's interesting to see, like, how is so-and-so going to play with so-and-so? Yeah. Like, it adds a different flavor to it. I think it, like, draws interest, too. Like, I can't I can't wait to watch the Lakers this year. I can't wait to see what they're going to do. Like I said, we're going to talk a lot about, like, NBA. We're going to get league pass and sit down and watch games and stuff. I can't wait to see the Lakers. Play. To me, they got the biggest, like, question mark. It's such a question mark. It could either be really, 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 really good or really, 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 really bad. <laughs> yeah, I like, feel like there's no happy medium there. It's like, if they're healthy, you can't see them losing. not being good. Yeah. But if they're not healthy, it's like they could end up being really bad. Really bad, <laughs> missing the playoffs almost. Yeah, yeah, like, it's, it's almost to that point, you know? Russ, if Russ doesn't stay healthy, Braun, Mello... Anthony Davis even. None of those guys stay healthy. They're not winning games. Hades traditionally not healthy throughout the year. Straight close. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. But. Dude, crazy. I think, like, we sat here and we talked a lot, like, in terms of this podcast and stuff, and we tried to say we're going to keep it to a minimum, but it's obviously always going to talk. We're always going to talk. Um, but, like, sort of an outlook of how these episodes and videos are going to go. We'll try and get one out each week. We also, we had more stuff on a run list. It's just, we're going to talk more about stuff like highlight tapes that we loved watching back in the day, or like even now watching highlight tapes. We're going to do some player analysis. We're going to talk to players. We're going to talk draft classes. We're going to talk hoop shoes. We're going to talk everything, right? Like, and that's, that's just what we really like have sat down and come up with when it's come to that. Sometimes we might talk music 
most of the time we probably won't talk music. Sometimes we're going to talk a lot of basketball. Sometimes we might not talk enough. But like it's really just to keep a catch up of me and you mm-hmm. and keep an idea. Like, you know, my family in Australia, hello everyone. Or like, you know, my girlfriend Bethany, everyone like they want to know what we're doing. Right. And it's hard to call people and talk to people every day. It's hard. Like yeah. you keep up on Instagram, you keep up on Twitter, you post on Facebook, but people don't see a lot of the stuff behind the scenes at the same time, you know? Oh, wow. So we're going to try We're just going to try and put out a lot of content, a lot of mm. like, I'll try and add some, you know, some vlog style videos, footage in these videos and try and just have fun with it. Um, but we'll try and keep these type of videos to an hour, an hour and 15. But like, right. we hope, that whoever is watching, if you've made it this far, thank you like so much. Like we really appreciate it. We we're not doing it for views. We're not doing it for the money. We're not doing it for fame. Nothing. Like, and I know you can say the same thing. Right. It's all just for fun. Like we're having fun just making this sort of stuff. We don't do anything else. We just sit down and have a good time. Um, and because we're passionate about this stuff, like you can tell. Like we have more written down here, thinking that we'd get through it all in an hour, and right. we've just sort of ticked over an hour now. Right. And we're not even close. Right. And that's just how it is. So an- another thing would be, you know, for those of you guys who, who are with us, you know, or who are interested in, and have content ideas, you know, who have a classic game of the week yeah. or, you know, favorite hoop shoes or, or a dude's highlight tape that we haven't seen or somebody, you know, that, you know, they thought was a crazy highlight tape, you know, drop it in the comments, yeah. you know, or DM us, DM, yeah. you know, you or me or, you know, we're looking for content ideas. We're also, you know... We kind of we're interested in kind of like those debate style like topics. Yeah. Also, I think that'll be fun too. Like talking about, you know, who's your top five greatest all time players, yeah. that kind of stuff. I think that'll be cool to 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 touch on because I know it's stuff that you know, you know, this is just like us hanging out. This is a normal oh, night. This is us. You we'll know, just be talking, like, we'll just be talking about you know, and some some stuff we agree on, some stuff we don't. But oh, it's yeah. it's always interesting to get people's perspective. Great. On, you know all of these topics so. yeah and i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get uh i'm gonna fire up our instagram um obviously i'll just i might just edit the handle right here uh worldwide hoopers podcast edit it in and on that on that page just follow it we're gonna put questions like q a things up on the instagram page like feel free to add to it comment down below all of that type of stuff and like jackson and i both well, so I'm going to say we're both great guys, but we are. Like, I mean, if you're going to DM about the content, we're not just going to leave you on red or anything like that. Like, we love, I love interacting with other people and getting more ideas and more things coming out of it. Like, if people over here in Lithuania want more LKL talk, then we'll try to get more LKL talking, you know? And that's that's just something we're trying to strive to do. But like, like he said, I mean, just like and subscribe, comment on this stuff, check out all the posts below. We'll have Jay's music, all his tags, We'll have our Instagram tags. We'll have, you know, highlights tags and whatever. Just stuff in there that's going to be interesting and helpful. We're going to try and make this also a helpful podcast in terms of, you know, um, like basketball workouts and stuff we've learned over time. But it's all just fun. It might be one episode a week. It might be two episodes a week. We don't know. We might just be doing it to have fun. We're going to come up with a bunch of content and just do it. Um, Like I said, like, thank you so much to everyone who has watched it and have made it this far like it's an hour of your time and again another thing is and i know i'm rambling on towards the end but if you guys would rather or like a an audio podcast uh, it's easy enough to edit that and make it an audio one like if you just want to listen to it in your car ride home or whatever again feel free to let us know on instagram on our dms anything whatever it is we'll, we'll try and you know cater to the people that listen and watch because it's 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 what makes it go you know But other than that, man, hey, thank you guys for watching. Peace out on my side. Peace out from Jay. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.